Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, hello. We are happy to welcome you here today. Today we are conducting our final press conference running up for the annual general meeting. Traditionally, our final press conference before the AGM deals with the financial and economic policy of the company. This press conference is conducted by Deputy CEO Fermil Sedigov, Deputy CEO Chief Accountant Elena Vasilieva, Heads of Departments Alexander Ivanikov, Karen Oganyan, and Vitaly Kutkov. And we also have Deputy Chief Accountant Mikhail Rasev. Now over to Fermil Sedigov. After which we will take your questions. Mr. Sadegev, over to you. Please go ahead. Famil Sadegev, good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm happy to welcome you all here today. Thanks for your time and interest in Gazprom. Today we're having our traditional press conference, our a traditional meeting between Gazprom and you. We've been lucky because over the recent weeks all the teams, departments, domains of Gazprom have met you and so um, seems like my colleagues and I uh, will be able to tackle the today's press conference quite easily. So now we're talking about the financial and economic domain and the accounting domain. I've stepped in as CFO, the head of the financial and economic domain this April. Uh, the tasks of the financial and economic domain uh, are very wide. It, the scope embraces the following missions, budget and tax administration, tariff and price regulation, economic due diligence and efficiency, investment activities, uh, debt management, treasury transactions, dividend policy, investor and shareholder relations. As the new CFO, I have um, the task to boost the efficiency and the performance, financial performance of Gazprom Group um, across the above missions that I have mentioned. And also our task is to ensure transparency, predictability and systemic nature of the financial and economic domain in Gazprom. Going forward today in my answers to your questions, you will hear efficiency performance and transparency, because um, our CEO at the previous meeting of the Management Board Executive Committee has given transparency, greater transparency as a task to the top management of the company. We've drafted our presentation. It's available on our website and uh, in the handouts circulated. I hope you've had enough time to read it. Uh, it embraces our financial metrics, performance, tasks, goals, and objectives going forward. Let me skip uh, the slides uh, to be able to uh, talk more to you to answer more of your questions. However, if you let me, I will focus on some numbers and also some goals and objectives. By the way, I do have something to uh, showcase, by the way, to remind you, in 2018, Gazprom managed to um, hit some historic records. I'm not going to repeat this phrase anymore, but these are really historic. So revenue amounted to 8.2 trillion rubles, 26% up year on year. EBITDA, um, 2.6 trillion, up 77% year on year in ruble terms. <laughs> Net income one trillion four hundred and fifty six billion rubles, uh, more than twofold growth versus twenty seventeen. In the period of time when we are running backbone projects, uh, significant nationwide tech stream, Nord Stream, and others that you have discussed with my colleagues we've been able to keep our free cash flow in the greens and this is our priority for years to come. Certainly our achievements have been underpinned by favorable external conditions. This is not a secret. Again, 
we have hit our record in terms of natural gas exports to Europe. However, it is equally certain that the 2018 success was driven first and foremost by efficient and uh, coordinated work of all the teams, associates and subsidiaries of Gazprom. These financial performance and achievements have led us as the management and then the board of directors uh, propose a record high dividend payout to the tune of 16 rubles 61 kopecks per share a more than twofold growth year on year versus the dividend for 2017 certainly the positive response of investment uh, community to this decision was quite expectable Certainly, this was not a random decision. This was an intended uh, decision of um, our top management, and we've decided to update our dividend policy um, to gradually transition to a 50% dividend payout ratio based on IFRS net income in the coming three years. So we're going to share our achievements, our success with our shareholders, including majority and minority shareholders, and link the size of dividend in the direct link the size of the dividend directly to the financial performance of the company to make dividend payments equally transparent to all the investors and shareholders for them to be able to estimate that without our participation, since this is a very important strategic task, a task for us. In, we've been instructed to do that by the board of directors in uh, um, the the task of invest and shareholder relations has been brought to a qualitatively new level. We are going to focus our IR initiatives uh, on the regions where most of our shareholders are represented, the United States, the United Kingdom and continental Europe, but also uh, keep strengthening our relations with institutional investors in Asia when it comes to uh, investor relations formats, we've decided to activate this work, maintaining constant, persistent cooperation uh, with investors uh, on a repeated basis or on an ad hoc basis, if need be. We've decided to uh, um, run regular conference calls and have ad hoc meetings with investors on a need basis. Um, in uh, the recent short time, we've had some 11 uh, sessions with our investors, if I'm not mistaken, uh, with the top management, executive committee members, independent directors involved, and we are going to keep doing so in the future. A couple of words about tax administration now, because this is a key mission we are undertaking here at Gazprom. Gazprom is a major uh, company, a major taxpayer in Russia. We contribute taxes to the tune of 3 trillion rubles to the budget system. We consolidate 65 entities as taxpayers. We pay taxes across 76 constituent entities of the Russian Federation. Um, this was a side note. Um, now, to boost investment appeal of Gazprom and the whole whole natural gas sector, uh, we need to ensure stable, sustainable and transparent tax regime. For us, this is first and foremost uh, attributable to the key tax for us, mineral instruction tax. And we are maintaining constant constructive dialogue with financial authorities of our nation. And uh, if you have noticed, at the St. Pete Economic Forum, Deputy Finance Minister Vladimir Kolichev stated that in view of Gazprom's new dividend policy, the financial authorities were going to quit the practice of withdrawals um, of earnings from Gazprom by means of mineral instruction. In tax start in 2019 to remind you the new tax code has it that um, after 2021 the markup factor in the MET formula for natural gas for Gazprom will be cancelled 
or if you want, the effect will be reduced to 1.0. Uh, this will certainly reduce tax burden on the company. Recently, we've been investing heavily in our large-scale projects, the Turk Stream, Nord Stream, the power of Siberia. Um, and uh, we've heard numerous questions about our investment plans going forward. So our investment plans in the future are built on the basis of selection of projects uh, whose efficiency is checked by thorough due diligence based on global best practices. The currently approved investment projects are set to deliver the required levels of return on investment. In recent time, time we've been expanding and gaining experience and scope of project financing. We're running a major project. This is the construction of the Omur gas process and plant, and we're going to uh, keep applying project financing instruments and methods to this project, expanding project financing practices to other projects. To wrap, to wrap it up, I would like to again reiterate the goals and objectives of the financial and economic domain. Again, this is boosting the transparency efficiency and financial performance within Gazprom Group. Our motto is the following. Transparency is always the best policy, given the scale of Gazprom. Secondly, our task is the enhancement of corporate governance with increased responsibility of all the managers for achieving the targets. We have set KPI-based targets across 816 entities within Gazprom Group, and um, based on the results of 2019, the performance will be assessed based on that set of KPIs. These have been recently tested, and the results of 2019 will be assessed based on them. Uh, thirdly, this is growth of shareholder return enhancement of Gazprom's investment appeal. We believe that Gazprom's shares and depository receipts are one of the best in the marketplace uh, in terms of their price to quality of assets and upside potential. And we uh, would like to convince the investment community that this is really so. Last but not the least, our target is improving and boosting stability and sustainability within the company. First of all, this is financial stability, and um, for this purpose, we are going to keep maintaining our conservative stance on the financial policy, maintaining our net debt to EBITDA leverage within the comfortable range, one times EBITDA to two times EBITDA. Besides, we've decided to fully centralize our cash flows within our single treasury think tank. We have already centralized that function, but now we're going to expand this uh, uniform scope to embrace some of our subsidiaries overseas and domestically as well. Secondly, I've certainly m mentioned not just stability, or financial stability, but also sustainability. Goals of sustainable development. We do understand the paramount importance of sustainable development, um, of this strategic focus on environment, social, and corporate governance matters, given the scale and scope of Gazprom domestically and abroad. Thanks a lot for your time and attention. I've tried to uh, keep my own story short to give you more time for questions. Over to you, Andrei, moderator. Thank you. Bloomberg, first question. Oscar, Dina Hrenikova, Bloomberg. My question is for Mr. Sadig. If you've just said that Gazprom was going to keep being conservative in terms of financial policy, I understand this is first and foremost about your debt management policy. So could you please clarify how you see Gazprom's uh, 
presence in the debt capital markets, possible eurobond issuances, and how are you going to control the level of debt before your key projects are completed? Mr. Sadigov, thank you, Dina, for your question. Well, conservative financial policy and model is something that we are following that's not just about debt to EBITDA, not just about leverage, not just about constraining it. Another important task here is to ensure conservative approach to budgeting itself, certain cost and expense limits and ending in uh, watching the implementation and execution of budgets within the aforesaid limits. Certainly, these limits must produce a certain effect. So this is our first task. Sec the second task, certainly we do have the task of ensuring strategic development of the company. So through budgeting, through budget execution, we would like to gain a better effect. Secondly, this is maintaining credit worthiness. This is a very important challenge for us. So in these terms, we would like to abstain from reducing, uh, to abstain from increasing debt. Uh, for now, we would like to keep our cash flows positive, whatever projects we implement. Net debt to EBITDA must not go above two times EBITDA. Currently, this is 0 0.8. Our colleagues are estimating the target for this year at one times EBITDA. Uh, our borrowing program for this year has actually been implemented already. But we have an alternative task as well. We can afford presenting, being present in the market at all times to get the required benchmarks. So we will be represented in the market. I am now trying to address a second question about eurobonds or other issuances. Actually, I'm not talking like in terms of eurobonds or ruble-based issuances. I'm just talking about tapping into capital markets generically. As I've said, we have set such a task for ourselves to keep being represented in the market. Not just not because we need liquidity. Liquidity is ample. Cash flows are abundant and let us run all our projects today. But to get alternative benchmarks, to get better benchmarks, we will keep being represented in the market. When it comes to Eurobonds, earlier this year we have uh, performed an issuance, taken out quite a significant amount of cash. We are considering a number of other instruments going forward, including multi-currency corporate bonds to be issued locally under the Russian law. We would like to be the corporate pioneer in Russia. There has been a sovereign issuance in that, and we want to be the pioneer in the corporate space in that. Um, the regulations are currently being reshuffled to facilitate investment processes. We've already discussed it with the Ministry of Finance, and we uh, will try to introduce required amendments to come out with such a program um, indicatively in autumn. Certainly no time guidance. A follow-up. You've said you were getting ready for a new Eurobond issuance. Can this happen this year, or is it about a longer term, Mr. Sadigov? Now, uh, if this year, then towards the end of the year, is that Euro? Yes. Uh, uh, colleagues, please use the mic, otherwise um, interpretation is sometimes impossible. Well, next question, Anton Huchenko, Interfax. How can you estimate the introduction of tax monitoring and gas from expert and um, can you shed some light on the outlook of introducing the same at Gazprom PGC and which significance does it have for the shareholders? 
Thank you. Mr. Sudegev. Thank you. Well, tax monitoring, to begin with, is something that we have decided to implement not just in Gazprom Export. This is that Gazprom is implementing tax monitoring jointly with the Federal Tax Service, and Gazprom Export is just a pilot subsidiary with tax monitoring to be further rolled out uh, across our consolida consolidated tax payer group. Naturally, this will embrace not just Gazprom Export, Next year, another six entities will be included, and a year later, we would like to achieve 40. And then Gazprom, the GSC, will also follow suit. What's, what's the significance? Well, to me, firstly, this is transparency. And by the way, we, when we selected the mode of maintaining cooperation with the Federal Service, we have chosen the so-called tax shop window with the Federal Tax Service being able to get access to our primary tax account and to be able to retrieve data in real time, as they say, 24-7 at any point in time, be it daytime or night. And um, this decision was well informed on our side, certainly. So we've implemented that system because Gazprom is a company that can't afford that. Uh, colleagues, do you have anything to add here? Well, yeah. Um, in 2022 to 2023, Gazprom, I expect, will follow suit. Um, moderator, further questions? Ilya Fedosov on NTV. Mr. Sadigev, could you please give us some detail about the new dividend policy, especially when it comes to your plans to boost your dividend payouts to 50%? Also, is the size of the dividend going to be dependent on some other financial metrics but for net income? Mr. Sadigev, uh, thanks for that one. I've already mentioned that first the executive committee um, has suggested increasing the dividend payout the board of directors agreed and so if the decision is taken this will be the maximum amount across all the Russian companies and I think even in the history of the Russian stock market so the new dividend policy at Gazprom is being now drafted you know, dividend policy is something that addresses a variety of goals and objectives. We want to strike the right balance between developmental goals and objectives, ensuring creditworthiness and attractive dividends to be paid out to shareholders. Firstly, dividend will be linked to net income, as I have already said, gradually. The size of dividend payouts will transition to 50% of net income. Now, what other metrics will it be dependent upon is something that will be up to our discussions with the shareholders, with independent directors, with representatives of majority shareholders on the board. Um, we would like to adjust our net income for non-cash transactions, certainly, to make it net of foreign currency revaluations, for example. Some colleagues are saying that uh, it's get to be linked to KPIs, and certainly independent directors, some independent directors are saying, no, let's take just the net income and that's it. Then we will also uh, listen to the Ministry of Finance and their take. Our task generically is to make the dividend policy as straightforward and transparent as possible. Um, to link it to our financial performance and to provide transparency and predictability to our shareholders and investors. Certainly, as we approve this dividend policy with our board of directors, we'll certainly duly communicate it to you. Moderator, thanks. Tatiana Kuleshova, Russia Today. 
to tell the coalition over Russia today. I have just a couple of follow-ups. Firstly, within your new dividend policy, are you going to test applying interim dividend payouts? And my second question is about Eurobond issuance. In March, Gazprom considered the possibility of issuing a Eurobond in Swiss francs. Are you still considering this idea? If not, why did you give it up? And then you said you're considering a Euro-denominated Eurobond. Can you give us an indication of possible size of this issuance, Mr. Sedegov? Uh, well, first of all, interim dividend. Well, this is not something that would scare us or make us concerned because we have abundant cash flows and we have a majority shareholder uh, taking relevant decisions linked to some payments. So, uh, and in case there is a need, we will be ready to take such a decision. But for now, we've been paying dividend once a year. Well, we'll see as we start debating on the dividend policy at the Board of Directors, we will consider the periodic nature of payments. Uh, when it comes to issuance, as your second question, uh, I can say that liquidity-wise there is no such an acute need. But we are really considering a Swiss franc denominated euro bond, and we've had meetings. Uh, within the St. Petersburg Economic Forum with our colleagues, with Swiss banks and Russian banks, um, prospective lead managers of the issue. And we have certainly, we certainly want to repeat our last year's success in terms of uh, the GATE program, our Japanese yen denominated bond. We have talked to expert agencies like JABIC. Uh, we're considering that program towards the end of the year or early next year, but we will also be uh, following this program, although this is not that crucial for us. Thank you, Yuri Titova, Forbes. Oscar, hello. My question is for Mr. Sedigov. Uh, you have said several times that your goal was to boost transparency. In 2018, gas destroy from entity was established. In particular, this is Gazprom's subsidiary, but it bought a share in Stroy Gas Consulting Company. Could you please explain which cash flows were used to uh, finance that purchase? Was it some borrowed funds or earnings of the company? And so this, this company, how would, will it influence the transparency within Gazprom, given the subcontractor framework? Also, it was said that Stroy Gas Montage and Stroy Chance, Stroy, uh, Stroy, I guess, will uh, be also owned by that company. Could you comment upon that, Mr. Sedigov? I hoped you have asked those questions to my colleagues from the capital construction domain, because this is not my cup of tea, really. So uh, when it comes to the centralization of functions in terms of construction and production, uh, is improving the efficiency. Because when several entities do the same, certainly this leads to duplications and reduced transparency. So I think consolidation is the best way to ensure transparency. So I cannot really comment upon that because this is not my cup of tea. This is rather a question for the construction domain. You should have asked this question uh, a bit earlier, like two weeks ago. And um, so I'm not really ready to answer that. When it comes to the transparency within the financial and economic domain, which is my cup of tea. So my take is that do not trust rumors. You better ask a question and you will get a direct answer. And we will keep following this principle going forward. So our task for the nearest time is to simplify the processes, planning processes, budgeting processes, budget execution processes to reduce such number of questions and probably 
issues. Then to we're going to maintain consistent communication with investors and shareholders for them not to read rumors in the newspapers. I am sorry for saying that. Uh, and we want you to have more unbiased information. Fortunately, I know many of you, and I will keep working with you collectively and individually. And I hope uh, the practice of maintaining contacts of communication will be regular and just once a year. Uh, for you not to write rumors in the papers. I'm ready to sit down together with you and discuss it with you. This is what I mean by transparency in Gazprom, and I will try to follow this practice. Moderator colleagues, please ask questions on the subject of the today's press conference. Bloomberg. A follow-up from Bloomberg. I would also like to clarify your plans in terms of CAPEX plan, a investment program for this year. You traditionally revisited several times a year. So the latest numbers that we've had in Q1 statements was two trillion seventy-eight billion rubles, if I'm not mistaken. Is the number still the same? Have you revised it? Uh, Mr. Sadigov, let me uh, abstain from talking about the group. Probably my colleagues will help me if need be. Uh, let me focus on Gazprom PJSC. The pairing company it does have its CAPEX plan. We sometimes revisit it. Uh, in the recent days, we've updated our CAPEX plan, but let me tell you that this year, for the first time, it got reduced by 47 billion rubles. And it was a plan. It was a planned reduction. So we sat down, we sat on it, tried to slim it down to optimize it, and uh, found ways to reduce it by 47 million rubles. Since there are not yet half-year financial statements, let's uh, discuss it with you a bit later, and we'll see what numbers we will get at the group level. A follow-up. The reduction of 47 billion rubles according to a plan. Is it year on year or uh, versus the budget of this year? Mr. Sedegev, it was versus the plan for this year. We were planning a number and then it got reduced by 47 billion rubles. Moderator, thank you. Interfax. Um, Question, how are your negotiations about project finance for Amur GPP? Have you signed documents with any banks on their participation? Mr. Sedegev, let me start with the end. Not yet. Um, we're going to close it down in Q3 to Q4 uh, financially. Uh, we have got proposals from all the banks. We were planning classical project finance, which means 30% of our own funds and 70% of borrowed funds. Certainly, I cannot disclose all the details now because the negotiations are still in progress, but we have got binding offers from all the banks on our table and the expert credit agencies. This is Russian banks, European banks, and Chinese banks. What I can say is the oversubscription is 2.5 times. Frankly, we didn't expect that. Yes, the project is attractive and promising returns, but 2.5 times of oversubscription is too serious a number. So now we are discussing, debating um, on a new plan because we now can afford getting tighter on legal financial uh, legal and financial terms and conditions uh, if I'm not mistaken the first meeting has already started today so the closure is scheduled towards the end of this year so I think we'll succeed with this project um, and since this is an international project I think 30 percent indicatively will be through expert credit agencies, 30% from the European entities, banks, and some Russian banks will also participate. And certainly, we would like to rely on Chinese banks in terms of getting another 30% of that. 
moderator, further questions? Interfax? Is there a link between the price of Power of Siberia price and it attracting China Development Bank to finance the Amur GPP? And can China request the revisiting of the contract terms unless that bank finances that. Mr. Sadegov, well, I don't quite understand the prerequisites of your question, but anyway, that participation of banks in that project is not dependent on anything. Chinese banks like including the Chinese contact. Maybe this uh, is why your question is worded like that, but no. Uh, the participation of Chinese banks are not dependent to anything and are certainly not dependent on the contract to uh, ensure gas supplies to China because the contract has been signed. Moderator, thank you a lot. On this press conference, we also have journalists from the Moscow Press Center, so let's give them an opportunity to ask their questions. Hello, Vitaly Sokolov, Energy Intelligence. I have just um, a couple of follow ups. First, the dividend. I understand from the recent comments from the top management of Gazprom, the 50% of IFRS net income is a certain target that you are going to achieve within the coming three years. But for how long are you going to maintain payments at that target? I understand 50% is the target, but not the minimum level. If this is so, which is the mandatory minimum, 27% or a bit higher? And during which period of time are you going to maintain dividend payouts at 50% based on your CAPEX plan and other possible drivers? Mr. Sadegov, uh, yes, uh, Alexander Ivanikov is eager to uh, answer that question. Frankly, I don't quite understand what you were trying to say. Well, for which period? Well, now we have drafted, we are drafting our dividend policy to be submitted to the Board of Directors to approve it in its turn. So within two or three years, we have a task to achieve 50, the 50% 50 level to pay 50% of net income. Whether it will persist for a long time, uh, well, the answer to that question is as long as the current dividend, as long as the dividend policy approved by the Board of Directors is in force. When the Board of Directors is changed, well, everything is possible. But, you know, when you approve a new dividend policy, it's not quite reasonable to uh, revise it one year later. But over to Alexander Rivanikov. Alexander Rivanikov, well, um, I don't understand why your question is. Probably that's because previously we uh, would comment on some cut of numbers. Uh, I have already commented upon this question. Let me again take you through the history of my comments. As Mr. Sadegov has said, the dividend policy must be comprehensive. And we would like to deviate from any additional numbers. So our target is 50%, the 50% payout ratio. You've said we're going to achieve it within two to three years. That's right. And then adjustments will be introduced subject to how the life progresses. We have passed our um, CAPEX peak, so we see such an opportunity to pay out 50% uh, as dividend without jeopardizing other tasks. If the situation changes, if the context changes, then uh, hypothetically the dividend policy may be adjusted uh, to get different numbers, but uh, most likely 50% will remain as the target level. Oscar, thank you. And I have another question for Karen. In absolute numbers, which will be the level of MET payments this year? And could you compare that to the base level of 2015 and last year's payout levels? Mr. Sidikov, you have it in your handouts. Maybe Moscow lacks the handouts. Oscar, yeah, in Moscow we don't have those. Uh, but okay, um, Mr. Oganian will comment upon it. Mr. Oganian, right, in 2019 we're going to pay MET for natural gas to the tune of 522 billion rubles, including 362 billion rubles as the base number which means uh, emitting for natural gas 
uh, without the mock-up factor, and 160 rubles is the uh, 160 billion rubles as the mock-up factor, Mr. Sidigev. Yeah, and that's without changing towards the year end. Uh, there will be no changes towards the year end, uh, uh, unlike it was previously in the previous two years. Oscar, thank you, moderator. Any other questions? Ekaterina Aliyeva, Gas Industry. Hello. Alexei Miller, on the 4th of June, um, talked of um, the market cap of Gazprom going in excess of 85 billion rubles with 1.5 times growth in share prices leading the um, Russian stock market. Could you comment upon the achievement of that? Mr. Sadegov, you have tried to mention that in my introductory presentation. Uh, let me try it again. We have set this task for ourselves to activate our investor and shareholder relations on the one hand and on the other hand to uh, pay out record high dividends, and certainly this has influenced the decision of investors to invest in our shares. Certainly, uh, share prices went up. The response was expectable, but the fact that we are managing to maintain this level is only driven by our persistent effort on our investor relations. So this is about our dividend policy, this is about the statements we have made in terms of how we are going to provide dividend flows to our shareholders. Uh, this is certainly driven by our strong financials. In Q1 we've performed quite strongly. I um, expect in Q2 we will also show strong performance and so investor shareholders do appreciate that. Up till recently the asset um, has been undervalued, and in my introductory presentation, I said I believe Gazprom's uh, shares are one of the most attractive assets in the market. So, fortunately, the investors now believe in that. Moderator, further questions? Oscar, hello. Yaroslav Tripsky, uh, Slovakia. Just a minor question. You have large investment projects like the Power of Siberia and Nord, St Nord Stream 2, Turk Stream, Amur, GPP, through which funding sources are you financing the projects this year and how are you going to change this strategy in the mid to long term if you are going to change it at all? Alexander Ivanik have taken the question. Thank you for your question. Let me remind you that out of the three projects, out of the four projects you have mentioned, three are going to be completed this year, and I will tell you how they're funded. I'm not going to talk about the um, outlook because I don't think the remaining six months will uh, affect the format materially. Now, Nord Stream 2 is financed through uh, by Gazprom in shares with financial investors, our prospective shareholders on parity conditions, 50 to 50. All the financial investors are delivering to all their commitments. No sanctions, no other actions have impacted the format. Now to extreme. This is approach and the completion. And this is being funded through the CAPEX plan of Gazprom. The power of Siberia is split into two parts, or even three major parts. First, field development, the pipeline, the pipeline itself, and the Omur gas processing plant. Now, the fields, one of the fields will be launched this year and will be develop, developed and will ramp up going forward. Just like the GPP, this is project financing 30 to 70 with completion in 2024. We do not expect any material changes in the financing scheme. Mr. Sidigev, you must know that we have already done some work on raising project financing for Nord Stream 2 and Turk Stream, and we will keep working on it. 
Moderator, thank you. Any other questions in Moscow? No. Thanks. Getting back here to St. Petersburg. Any other questions remain in St. Pete? Then questions on the web. Prosperity Capital Management, Alexander Brennis. Could you please comment upon the interim performance and plans on operational metrics on pages 4 and 7? Um, you have some numbers. Thank you. Alexander Renikov, could you please repeat the question? Is it about reducing OPEX? Yes. Could you please comment upon your plans and targets in terms of cutting operating expenses? I uh, have some numbers in the presentation on pages 4 and 7. So this is the question. Vitaly Hatkov is taking the question. Yeah. Hello, colleagues. Um, let me give a number of comments. In accordance with the government directives and decisions of the board of directors, we have approved a, a policy to optimize operating expenses. This is comprehensive, embracing upstream, midstream, gas storage, and process and downstream. Within this policy, all the relevant teams and domains within Gazprom are running operational excellence measures including optimizing operating expenses, improving procurement practices, and also optimizing capital expenditures. Based on our preliminary estimates and calculations, for 2018, the economic impact from this work stream at the level of Gazprom PGSC is estimated at 247 billion rubles. So this is across all the domains, CAPEX optimization, project design optimization, procurement improvement, OPEX optimization, and optimizing the procurement of material and technical resources. Uh, this work is persistent. It has been in progress for about 10 years, and the same work is expected in 2019. Performance for 2019 will be estimated on a half year basis, so we will be able to produce comments uh, at one of our future press conferences. Thank you. Moderator, several people on the internet are asking about the projection um, for 2019 in terms of net income and EBITDA at Gazprom PJSC. Mr. Sadigov, I think we're going to deliver to our previously announced targets. Alexander Ivanikov, we typically do not disclose net income and a bid day projections, uh, we can um, give you some remedy guidance and then you can make estimates yourself. Usually we do not disclose our internal projections. Moderator, thank you. In your further questions locally at the press center here. Three, two, one, zero. Thanks a lot. See you again in the future. Mr. Sadigov, thanks a lot. Again, I hope uh, we will meet each other more frequently, certainly, if you do want to do that. Thank you.